What's going on, Stellar Crew? Bob MacArthur here for Stellar View Telescopes and the February 24 edition of In the Sky. So let's get to it. Let's talk about what we got going on. So this month's observing highlights, February 7th before sunrise, you have a really nice trio of Mars, Venus, and the moon getting together. Nice, nice slender crescent moon. On Valentine's Day, February 14th, you got the waxing crescent moon up there by Jupiter. Uh, v, our, uh, Uranus is also up there. So, you know, you can check out Uranus, kind of a, a solar system three for there. On February 16th, the first quarter moon swings on over to the Pleiades. It's always fun to see the, the moon and the Pleiades kind of swing together and kind of make that pairing. And then you have, uh, before sunrise, Venus and, the, and Mars on February 22nd are going to be within a half a degree of one another. And, you know, it's exciting. Mars is starting to swing into view here as it's getting higher and higher in the sky. Unfortunately, we're starting to lose Venus in the, in the morning sky. But I guess that also means fortunately here in a few months we'll have Venus in the uh, evening sky. So check out that pairing on February 22nd. Now, another thing to check out this month are Jupiter's moons. Um, if you go to Sky and Telescope's Jupiter's Moon website, you can actually type in a date and time and you can see when Jupiter's moons are transiting and moving across the, uh, the disk of Jupiter. And sometimes you can see moons, you can see the positions of the moons. So that is a great tool for uh, figuring out which moons are which and also uh, when transit events are happening. So let's, uh, let's talk about what we got going on in the solar system. Uh, there's your moon phases. Uh, you got the new moon, February 9th. So if you've got a dark sky side or you want a good dark sky weekend, that is the, the around the time you want to do it, February 9th. And then you have the full moon. I mean, we all have our thoughts about the full moon, you know, a natural light pollution. Uh, sometimes the day before, the day after, you can get the craters on the, uh, on the edges. So that's uh, when the full moon is. So what's going on with the solar system? Well, unfortunately, Saturn is, 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 is headed towards solar conjunction. So Saturn is kind of out of the, out of the question there. But we do have Jupiter and Uranus, both nicely placed for viewing right now. Neptune is visible too, but it's going to be uh, kind of in the western sky, kind of harder to get um, as it, it fades from view pretty, pretty early now. But like I said, Jupiter and Uranus, wonderful. And then, of course, we have our planets in the morning, um, Mars and Venus. So check those out. So star clusters. That's what we got going on now. Ah, there's beautiful groups of star clusters this time of year. This time of year, we're back to looking out on the long the galactic plane. Now, in the winter time, Orion and Gemini are kind of on the outer edges of the galactic plane, and that's why we don't see a very bright Milky Way. So if you're away from, uh, from light pollution, get in some dark skies, you'll see a faint band of the Milky Way kind of extending through Orion and Gemini. But the summer Milky Way is the brightest because that's when we're placed looking towards the center of the galactic plane at night. But this time of year, because we're aligned with the galactic plane again, we have beautiful nebulas and beautiful star clusters to get. M35 is just one of my favorite open star clusters. It's kind of on the foot of Gemini. Check that one out. M46 is a really neat open star cluster. It actually has a little planetary nebula in it. So if you have a UHC filter or an O3 filter, you can kind of help pop out that nebula. Um, take, a sh take some pictures of it if you can. I, I, you know, I'd love to see what you guys get. M47, just a really nice uh, open star cluster. And of course, I had to put the Pleiades up there, M45. Whether you're shooting it wide field or you've got a wide field eyepiece, beautiful star cluster to look at, whether you have a, an 80 millimeter all the way up to a, a 180. Check it out. Um, this time of year, wonderful for nebula. I had to put the Orion Nebula up there. It's kind of the, 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 the show uh, piece of the winter sky. You know, it's a beautiful object to look at, again, through any aperture, uh, whether you're taking pictures of it, whether you're doing vis uh, visible or naked eye viewing, or, yeah, naked eye, you can get it with your, uh, with your eyes. You can see it. Or you're just doing visual observation. Get the Orion Nebula. It is amazing. If you pop a UHC filter in there, you can start getting all the tentacles in detail. Actually, if you swing up from the Orion Nebula to the belt, you have the Flame Nebula and you have the Horsehead Nebula. Now, the Horsehead's a little bit uh, hard to get visually, but I know some of you are getting really good images of it with your scopes using different filters and things like that. Um, I, I can get it in my 16-inch that I have with my uh, H-beta filter vis uh, 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 visible, uh, so check it out. Um, we have the Rosette. I really do like the Rosette. Actually, with my SVX-90T here with the UHC filter from Dark Skies, I can get the Rosette, and uh, it's pretty cool. And some of you are getting phenomenal images of the Rosette. 
Now we also have NGC 2392, which is the cloud face nebula. This is a planetary nebula. So uh, you look at that planetary nebula and depending on your aperture and your skies, you can actually pull out that uh, white dwarf in the middle of that planetary nebula. So there's a good one there. Swing on over to uh, the, uh, the cone nebula and the Christmas tree cluster. So I put these two together because they're right next to each other. And yeah, there is a group of stars that actually looks like a little pine tree. It's pretty fun. And then uh, you have the cone nebula. It's not super bright, but uh, with different filters, you can pop out different detail. So that's NGC 2264. Big Dipper's starting to come up. And in the frying pan part of the Big Dipper, you actually have M97, the Owl Nebula, which is a planetary nebula. And again, depending on your skies and your aperture, you can actually see some detail in the nebula and also that little white dwarf there in the middle. Now, with M97, you also have a galaxy, M108, the Starburst Galaxy. Uh, depending on your field, you might be able to get them in there. They're kind of stretched apart, but it's kind of fun to be able to get a planetary and then swing on over to M108 and uh, get yourself a galaxy. So check that out. Two of my most favorite galaxies are up, M81 and M82. I really enjoy looking at those galaxies, and they are close enough to where you can get them in the same field of view. And these are relatively close galaxy galaxies uh, to us. So they're pretty bright and uh, just fun galaxies to look at, uh, the spiral structure of M81, and then you get that nice kind of irregular stretched out uh, of M82. And then M31 and M33 are still hanging in there, the Andromeda Galaxy and the Triangulum Galaxy. They're headed over to the western part of the sky, but you can still get them this time of year. So get out there. P binaries. I mean, there are a lot of different binaries. It was actually really hard for me to pick some to showcase this month, but uh, I really like Tegamine. Tegamine is a really neat binary over there in, uh, in Cancer. That's a Zeta Cancer. When you first look at Tegamine, you actually have two yellow components. But depending on your aperture and your seeing, you can pull another one out really, really, really tight. I can get that with my SVX 127D. I can pull it out. So try that one. You also have Zeta Orionis in the belt of Orion. Um, really nice triple star system. You get two. And then depending on your aperture and your seeing, you can pull another close one out. So uh, shoot for that one. And then there's just Castor. Castor is just a great uh, blue-white binary to get. It's about the same brightness. Just beautiful, um, solid binary. And then you have um, Beta Monoceros. This is a fun triple star. Uh, kind of blue-white components all right there. And if your seeing's good, they'll pop just right there. So I encourage you to get that one. You know, it's February. Uh, February is your winter time, you know, and the weather can be all over the place. It can be 60 degrees one day and 20 degrees and snowing the next. But there are so many really good uh, objects and targets to get this year. Thor's helmet. I for totally forgot about Thor's helmet. I really enjoy looking at that one, too. Really pops in UHC. But there are so many wonderful objects. I encourage you guys to get out there, whether you're doing some visual observation or you're getting some more data for your, uh, for your photos. Get out there, have fun, try different filters. Um, go explore some of these wintertime constellations. Uh, get those photons on your, on your camera, or those photons on your eyeballs, y'all. Um, and have a wonderful, wonderful month. And uh, keep looking up.